Hey, it's Professor Dave. Let's talk about neutralization reactions. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. We know that acids will generate hydronium in aqueous solution, and bases will generate hydroxide in aqueous solution because of the way these substances react with water molecules. And it is the concentration of hydronium or hydroxide in solution that we can use to describe the acidity or basicity of that solution, whether using pH or pOH or some other calculation. We also know that pure water is a neutral substance. This doesn't mean there is no hydronium or hydroxide in solution. But in the auto-ionization of water, in the rare instance that two water molecules collide and transfer a proton from one to the other, this will always result in the production of precisely one hydronium and one hydroxide. So there must be precisely equal concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide, and therefore any possibility for acidity or basicity is canceled out. A solution will only be acidic or basic if one of those ions is present in greater concentration than the other. But pure water is not the only solution that can be neutral. Other solutions can also be neutral even if they contain a lot of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. They simply need to be present in the same initial concentrations such that they neutralize. This is what can happen when we react strong acids and strong bases with one another. Protons from the acid and hydroxides from the base, if present in precisely the same amount, will react completely to form water molecules as well as an ionic salt from the counter ions, resulting in an entirely neutral solution, since neither of these substances is an acid or a base. We call this kind of reaction a neutralization reaction, which will occur between a strong acid and strong base in aqueous solution. Of course, this will only result in a neutral solution if precisely stoichiometric amounts of acid and base are mixed, and even then, it will only be neutral if the acid and base are both strong. For example, as we can see here, Hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, if mixed in equal proportions, will generate water and sodium chloride. Furthermore, because hydrochloric acid has one proton and sodium hydroxide has one hydroxide, these can be mixed in equimolar quantities. If, for example, the base had two hydroxides, like calcium hydroxide, we would need twice as much acid as base to generate a neutral solution, since each calcium hydroxide would need two protons from two acid molecules to neutralize. But as long as this is the case, a strong acid and strong base will react to form a neutral solution. If instead, a strong acid like hydrochloric acid reacts with a weak base like ammonia, the resulting solution will be relatively acidic because the acid will completely protonate the base, giving us the ammonium ion. And the ammonium ion is weakly acidic, so it will generate hydronium in solution. Similarly, a weak acid like acetic acid and a strong base like hydroxide will generate a slightly basic solution because hydroxide will completely deprotonate acetic acid, leaving the acetate ion, which is just basic enough to react appreciably with water molecules in solution, generating a small amount of hydroxide and making the solution weakly basic. And then lastly, when a weak acid and weak base interact, it becomes complicated to predict what kind of solution will result, and we typically have to do some math. We might get an acidic solution, a basic solution, or even a neutral solution, depending on which is slightly weaker, the acid or the base. But the key is to understand that in a neutralization reaction, protons 
which dictate acidity, and hydroxides, which dictate basicity, are reacting with one another to form water molecules, which are neutral. And while the strength of the acid and base will determine whether the resulting solution is acidic, basic, or neutral, these will all qualify as neutralization reactions. Let's check comprehension. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.